everyone, it's me Alexandria and today we are going over the topic of Instagram themes and while I have only recently started re-theming my YouTube Instagram, I have had several themes on my personal and if you go back you'll see my uh, YouTube Instagram used to be themed as well. Now um, a theme is kind of, it's a little tricky to explain but if you ever look at someone's feed on Instagram and just looked at it and thought wow that looks amazing and it was really cohesive and everything seemed like it fit, there was nothing out of place and didn't seem like a jumble of random stuff. That's basically what a theme is. A theme is basically like criteria, each of your photos kind of meets and because each of your photos kind of meets this sort of criteria you set, it creates this really cool cohesion effect when you look at your feed and scroll through it and everything looks like it fits together. That's what a theme is. Now there are several ways to actually go about making yourself a theme. <clears throat> now sticking to it is a whole nother thing, but um, I'm not really going to touch on that today. Um, it's really a lot of dedication kind of thing, but um, there are several ways to go about making a theme. Those are filters, editing, and content theming. So I will be going over all three of those ways and telling you how you can theme your Instagram because, well, some people like themed Instagrams. Onwards. The most popular way to theme your photos is filters and it's actually pretty easy. You know, you pick a filter and you put it on all your photos. But there is something you gotta be aware of with filters. Filters are a set, standard, sort of box of settings that are automatically adjusted. They do not regularly adjust for each photo to accentuate it the way it needs to be accentuated. The thing is with this, it's kind of like a one size fits all. And if anyone has tried one size fits all, you know it doesn't fit all sizes. It's the truth. I think the only time one size fits all is honestly possibly true is with hats. And that's because you regularly have an adjusting gang. And heads regularly don't get too big. But even then, Someone still ain't gonna fit into it. It's just how it is, and filters are similar. Regularly, the photo they use for um, filter testing, kind of that uh, stock photo, is regularly one with good lighting and good contrast, and regularly is a very good quality photo. And regularly, it will have very neutral colors, so you can see the colors of the filter. Thing is, certain colors don't go together, like warm filters of green. It ain't gonna look good because green and red are complementary colors and that's just, it's gonna go awry fast. So be a little cautious on picking your filters. If you know you're gonna be posting a lot of green, warm filters might be a little weird. If you know you're going for a very red warm, but if you're going for more of like a yellowy, that might work. Um, now, a couple of apps that people um, have seen. Uh, kind of seen and used. Some of these I haven't used, so um, they might not actually have filters, I don't know. One of the very most popular is ViscoCam. One of the big reasons ViscoCam is so popular is because of the fact it has a um, kind of gallery thing that is free by how many ever rows of photos you have. But um, basically it allows you to view your photos and get it kind of a preview your feed because it's just like Instagrams. So a lot of people really like it for that. I'm not a biggest fan of their filters, but they do have some cool effects. So I would check it out. Uh, again, you're going to need to adjust your photo for every filter though. And that's just kind of the thing with photos. Um, I have heard of a couple of random apps. Um, Aviary had some filters, but I think a lot of them were paid. Um, that's an Adobe app. It's decent for editing. I'm not going to totally recommend it, though. Um, I have heard of Afterlight. I'm not sure if it's a filter app, so download it and it isn't. I'm sorry, I've never used it. I actually don't know. Um, Google Photos, which I highly recommend if you have Google+. Plus. I think it comes with Google+. Plus. It is awesome for backing up. I highly recommend for backing up. Uh, they have a couple of filters too. I kind of forgot if I really liked them. I don't think I really did, but they might work for what you need. And uh, then you have Instagram filters. Most of them suck, but um, if you like them, go ahead, because you know you can do you. 
So uh, yeah, that's basically it, but just remember you might have to adjust your base photo to make the filter work better. But it is a very easy way and pretty quick too to get a cohesive feed. So do I recommend it? Yeah, I've done it before. The next type of theme you can do is editing, yay! So there's a lot you can do with editing. You can basically kind of tailor your photos in any way you want really. Uh, so it's gonna be the hardest one to cover but you can do simple editing, you can do advanced editing. Um, for right now, we're gonna be talking about just simple adjustments and maybe some borders and stuff. Um, this is kind of the route I like to take because it is, it gives you the most freedom because with filters, again, you have to kind of worry about that type of stuff. But with editing, you can really, you can, what am I trying to do here? You really get to control every aspect of your photo. So uh, the two apps, it looks like I'm saying four, but I was just trying to do two with both of my hands. The two apps I would recommend are Snapseed and Pixart. Snapseed is very user-friendly. Um, it's basically the old Google Photos editor. If you know you had the old Google Photos editor, it was, it rocked, it rocked. And this is basically what Snapseed is. It's the same thing, except with a couple more features. It's a very easy slide to adjust interface. So it's very user-friendly, but it doesn't have as many options as Pixar does. And now on to Pixar. Pixar's a little more advanced. It has things such as curve adjusting. It has a couple more options. And you can do thing, a lot more borders and things. It also has like a bunch of features. And you can do some very cool photo editing on Pixar if you are into very, you know, like doing a lot of photo manipulating. But this isn't really what this is about. This is about actually just basic photo editing. So either of the apps can work. I use Pixar. I like to keep everything in one app and it has basically everything you need. It has adjusting, it has, you know, adjusting your mask. It is a little complicated to get a hang up. So just practice and maybe I'll do some tutorials on it if it's requested. But um, basically with editing, you can do a lot of things. Uh, some examples would be Hiring the brightness in photos, hiring the contrast, or lowering the contrast, which is what I used to do because it was so simple. It actually looked kind of bad in my opinion, so I wouldn't do it. But that's just me again. That's just me. That's just me. You can do it if you want. Uh, up in the saturation or lowering the saturation. Um, if you up the saturation, be prepared to have to mask out your skin though because you'll, at least for me anyway, I'm not sure about you. I look sunburnt when the saturation is too high or I look like I got a very bad spray tan, and honestly, I don't wanna look like that at all. But, um, so there are a lot of things you can do, again. Um, those are some examples, because with value adjusting, you can make all your photos bright saturated, or dark, and, you know, like, shadows really being there and prominent. Um, geez, uh, I'm really bad at explaining. But basically, you can do a lot of things. Um, now, one thing you can also do is you can add borders and things, which can be very cool. And while most people have probably completely, you know, forgot about this because of Instagram now allowing portraits and landscape photos, square fits actually aren't a bad idea. Doing a photo with those two white borders or whatever isn't bad at all. I actually do that now because now that I'm looking at it, it makes a very clean feed, especially when combined, say, a bright, saturated kind of theme, which is kind of what I'm going for now. It's actually really nice looking. And you can actually do a lot. You could have your square fit be blurred if you wanted, um, or you could do colors, and you could do all sorts of different colors. Like every room you could post could be a different color if you wanted. It doesn't have to just be white. You could do blues, you could do greens, you could do reds, you can do purples, pinks, anything. <laughs> you can you can really do a lot. You you've got a lot of options. And and you could or you could just do a looping background. It, you you've got it's, it's a good idea, personally. I like square fit now that I'm doing it again, or I actually have never done it, so I'm doing it for the first time, but I really do like using it. I'm using Pixarts, if you're wondering. It's very useful, actually, and it allows you to see the entire thumbnail of a photo from far away, and it gives us really cool floating effects from when you're scrolling through the feed. Obviously, you don't have to use that if you don't want to, but with editing, you have a lot to take in, so it's the most complicated option but you have the most control, 
And honestly, if you can actually handle it, I'd recommend this the most. But then again, that's just me. You might like the next option more. Or you might like the last one. I don't know. The final way of theming your photos is content theming. This is the one that allows you the least freedom. I'll go ahead and say that now. Content theming would be posting just one particular type of photo. So like a photo of like your outfit in front of a mirror every single day or something. And then your feed would look nice and put together because it's just one type of photo. Or just posting the same type of drawing. Or things like that. Or certain objects that are say a certain color. Or certain things associated with a season. Things like this are not a bad idea for a theme. If you can't think of anything else and you don't really like the crud posts as people call it even though they actually use a swear word but I'm allowed, not allowed to swear. So oopsie daisy I can't say that. But, um, you know, where did my voice go? Where did my words go? Where did they go? Did they fly off? Did, 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 did they go to the, did they go to the Bahamas? What? Where are they? Get back here. Anyway, <laughs> back to what I was saying. Uh, basically, um, content theming won't give you much freedom, though. But you can combine it with things like editing and filtering and get a really, really nice, cohesive feed. And if that's what you're going for, I'd recommend, and honestly, you can combine this with editing and filtering, as I just said, and you will get something really, really cool. Um, now, obviously, geez, have I just been leaning up in my chair this entire video? Because I think it started out like this, and then I'm going like this. Okay, I need to get back on topic. Sorry. Um, back on topic. But um, this won't give you as much freedom, but your feed will be very nice. And if there's only one thing you really like to post about, you might as well do it. It'll make your feed look nice, and honestly, eh, why not? Alright, um, that's about it for Instagram theming. Obviously, you don't have to theme your Instagram if you don't want to. It's your choice, and honestly, it can get annoying having to edit every single photo you post. But it is something to consider if you really like put-together feeds like I do. So anyway, that about wraps everything up. Um, I don't like self-advertising, but I am going to say this since I'm not sure how many people of you watch, how many of you, how many people of you, what? What? Uh, I'm not sure how many of you watched my last video, so I'm just going to kind of say this again. If you have ever kind of looked at my art and liked it, um, I am opening, I have commissions open on DeviantArt. Um, I'm a little iffy on doing fan art for commissions, but if you want to see an original character, or a fan character, because I'll do fan characters, not fan art. I have a whole journal on it. Basically, if you've ever wanted me to draw something for you, go check out my commissions. But anyway, that's about it for this video. I hope you learned something new, because I like teaching people stuff. Soda. Anyway, <laughs> alright, let me just end this video so nothing else goes out of any, uh, nothing else goes wrong. As always, like this video if you like this video, favorite this video if you favorite this video, comment your opinions and subscribe if you want to. Peace out, have a great day, and I will see you next time, guys. Bye-bye, and I'll catch you later. Bye.